Hello, welcome back, Dr. Renee here. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss my personal struggle or struggles with adrenal dysfunction, also known as adrenal fatigue. I say struggles because I've had it more than once. And every time I get better and better because I pick up on it sooner because I know what the symptoms are and I know how to treat it. In this current video, I'm actually not going to go through all the different ways of diagnosing it and the symptoms and the treatment. I will say that for a later video. I just kind of want to give an overview and some of the rabbit holes that you can actually get into when you're trying to chase down these symptoms and you don't quite fit in a box, okay? Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you resonate with it and you think someone else is experiencing this and could hear this information, share it to the world because knowledge is power and you're empowering somebody else to take back their health. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's have a very real discussion about adrenal dysfunction, also known as adrenal fatigue. I feel like the term has evolved because not everyone that has adrenal dysfunction is actually full-fledged adrenal fatigued. They're actually different phases, but I actually have suffered from adrenal dysfunction a few times in the past eight years. Now, if you haven't seen my first video on this new season, where I tell you a little bit about how I got here doing functional medicine, why I do what I do, go back and take a look. It's a super short video, but essentially, I fell off a horse and broke my back. And this was right on the, on the tail of leading a very busy OBGYN lifestyle. I was up awake delivering babies either every other night or every third night. I had newborn twins when I had broken my back. They were four, almost five years of age. But you know, those all those years of having the newborn babies, so between not sleeping with work and not sleeping with uh, infant to toddler twins was really very difficult and a stressor on my body and my life. Um, and you know, my release was, and I, as a doc, you don't really have hobbies. You just work. And then I had a family. So essentially I got the horse, which again, go back and you'll hear all about the horse story, but essentially I got a, a horse as a stress reliever and basically to have a hobby. And I didn't even have that horse for a year and I fell off the horse and broke my back. And a lot of times with adrenal dysfunction, it'll be chronic stress, emotional, either even physical stress, like a chronic health condition or post-traumatic stress disorder or autoimmune disease or persistent negative thoughts, something, persistent uh, sleepless nights. It's something chronically. And then a lot of times you'll get one event. And for me, it was falling off the horse and breaking my back. That was it. And that set me into an undiagnosed tailspin for the next two and a half years because I did not quite fit into a box of a diagnosis. So what were some of the symptoms I was having? I um, couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I was extremely fatigued. I had very little motivation to do anything. I, I kept playing victim mode essentially. And every time I moved, my back would be uncomfortable and I was always so fearful I was gonna hurt myself again. Um, I was not, again, motivated to eat well. I had no energy to play with my kiddos. Essentially what I did is I only worked a couple days a week in uh, outpatient gynecology. I was no longer operating or delivering babies, so I lost all purpose in my life, or so I thought. And um, I'd come home from work and plop on the couch and that's where I'd stay for the rest of the day and maybe pop a narcotic if I needed one because I would not take prescription medications while working. And of course, then follow it with other medications because I don't do well with uh, narcotics, which are really strong pain medications. So I'd always have to take something right after to help with the nausea. I'd have to take some stuff to help with constipation. So it was like this mess. And quite frankly, you know, when I had that thought, and again, go back to that video, that really terrible thought I had one night in bed with my husband about no longer going on with my life, I knew I had to do something. And having that thought, in addition to all of these other symptoms, I went to my doc and of course, didn't. I left out the part about no longer wanting to be alive, but I did tell her about all my symptoms. And she's like, you know, I think you have depression. And back then, I didn't know there was this whole other world of holistic health and there could be other things going on with my body. I myself was trying to fit myself into a box. And the best box I could fit into was depression. And so, and I'm not saying if you have some of these symptoms that you don't have depression, because you very well may. 
the reason I put this content out there is to make sure that I, we consider all options if you are not getting the answers to your symptoms and you're not thinking it's quite the right fit. So for me, again, um, back then I wasn't, I was on a ton of medications all of a sudden. I was someone before I broke my back, no medications. I was active, I was healthy, I exercised, I did it all. And I actually had had on a, my bucket list to um, do a 5K right before this, this my injury. So, you know, when I failed to fit into, I fit into the box, I scrunched myself into that depression box, let me tell you but I failed the medications. And in the real conventional medical world, it's never a problem with the diagnosis, it's a problem with the medication. So docs will try over and over. And when they run out of medications, either they say, I don't know what else to do, or they send you to another specialist, right? I don't know how many clients I have seen in the past and patients that have been through several doctors, and then they, they end up with me and I'm like, oh yeah, this is going on, this is going on, and they're like, they feel so much better. So essentially that was me when I found a functional medicine doc. And I'm telling you, with one visit, taking a very thorough history, she said, you know, Renee, I think you have adrenal dysfunction. And she did a saliva test, which I'll talk about in the future, different ways of testing for adrenal fatigue, but I, I did a saliva test. Lo and behold, I can't tell you how I felt when I got that piece of paper in front of me and I was like, oh my gosh, it's not all in my head, right? Because how many times have you had these symptoms and you think, well, the antidepressants don't work, so it's not depression. It must be all in my head, right? Or your doc might make you think that. So, and quite frankly, nothing against regular conventional docs. I was trained as one. Um, the, the difference is they're not trained in some of these other um, things that might be going on with your body and how to treat them. And quite frankly, back in the day when I was practicing OBGYN, I would have patients coming in on hormone replacement, bioidentical hormone replacement, which is a functional medicine thing. And I would be like, I don't know what that is. I'm not educated enough in that field. But essentially I would just do their exam, not bad talk to functional medicine doc, not claim to know that I knew anything about that and send them on their merry way. Okay. So in defense of your regular doc, if you go in and say, Hey doc, I think I have adrenal fatigue, adrenal dysfunction. First of all, they're probably going to laugh at you and say, there's only two extreme conditions of the adrenal gland, only Cushing's or Addison's. There's nothing in between. And you know, we got to think about that. Any other organ in the body, there's always dysfunction before failure, right? Kidney disease. Rarely does someone just have like kidney failure. It's usually chronic um, deficient, like a, a problem for a while, dysfunction for a while before it completely gives out the kidney, the liver, the brain. You know, you don't wake up one morning and just have no more memory. It's a, it's a gradual process. So, you know, same with the ovaries. Women go through perimenopause. We're starting to run out of our eggs. There's a little bit of ovarian dysfunction going on before one day we wake up and we no longer have um, the ovarian function that we used to have, okay? So just think about that. Like if every other organ in the body can have dysfunction before it fails, why can't the adrenal glands, right? So that was me, um, you know, got the diagnosis. I did make some really uh, strategic lifestyle changes and supplement uh, additions. And you know, I'm all for supplementation, but I'm also all for getting to the root cause of the problem. For me, it was it was stress related, it was my injury. I had to do a lot of mindset work. Um, you know, I had to try to support my adrenals with the supplementation until I got to a point where I could go off of them. Now there's some key supplements I'm actually going to recommend, and I'm gonna save that for another video, but there are actually some key supplements that pretty much everyone in my opinion, with chronic stress should be taking. But, you know, in addition to that, I really focused on getting good sleep in adrenal uh, fatigue. The most restorative sleep is between 7 and 9 a.m. in the morning. And the other key thing is try to go to bed before 10 o'clock because one of my symptoms was I would get wired at night. And I had a condition where it's sort of stage two of the adrenal curve. I was wired at night and I was tired in the morning. And this was like one stage away from me completely like bottoming out my cortisol all day long. So if I didn't go to bed by 10, I would be like, bing, ready to go, to, ready for the day. So I would recommend that if you suspect adrenal dysfunction, go to bed by nine. On the weekends, if you can sleep in a little bit later, have grace on yourself, sleep in the seven, nine o'clock. If you're finding like you're fatigued all day and you're suspecting that's an adrenal issue, you know, again, stay tuned for some uh, future videos on the workup, symptoms workup and treatment of adrenal dysfunction. But um, really what's important is that you get that sleep, 
and you have grace on yourself and you start working on your stressors, what you think led to it. And um, obviously adequate hydration, nutrition is super important. That was another symptom I have, cravings for junk food, sugar, because when you have adrenal dysfunction, um, your cortisol can be really low. Um, you can actually, or high, it depends on what stage you're in, you can have blood sugar dysregulation and incredible cravings also for sugar, depending on what your cortisol is doing regarding your sugar and depending on how much, how low on energy you are. Because a lot of times we look at a lot of packaged processed food has a lot of added sugar and those carbohydrates actually give us that quick energy, including coffee. A lot of people with adrenal dysfunction survive all day on coffee and that was me. And that's pr pretty much the like one of the worst things that you can do for adrenal dysfunction. You really want to to try hard and again it comes with sort of layering on you know the basic lifestyle changes giving you some energy with some supplements and then you get a little more motivation to eat a little well it's really like the stepwise approach so with my patients in the past and my current clients i don't expect them to like wake up one morning and be like i'm all better because you got to remember you don't go through adrenal dysfunction like overnight it's a process but there's just one day that you think, wow, this is not normal. Or you have a doc like me that's saying, that's not normal to feel like that. Don't say it's because you're aging, that you're getting old and that's why you're feeling like this. I am, or that it's normal. It is not normal and it's not because you're getting older, okay? So I hope my story helped. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Let me fast forward a little bit through uh, everything that's happened since I was first diagnosed and treated. I went on and did a functional medicine fellowship so I can help other people not feel as hopeless and helpless as I had in the past. It is my mission to help 10,000 women not to feel as low as I had felt and to empower them back to better health and a better life. And so that with that mission, I got my functional medicine fellowship. So I am um, certified, board certified, and I am well equipped with the knowledge that I feel I need to help women get to that level. And, you know, I felt so great when I started to exercise. I actually did uh, a couple bodybuilding competitions. I actually did very well. And I've, I've since uh, retired my trophies from my bodybuilding days because kind of cross that off, you know, prove that you can actually win a bodybuilding contest after breaking your back. And I have now actually started my own online virtual functional medicine health consulting business, focusing primarily on female entrepreneurs. And, you know, I find that women, all, everyone, women and men, but I speak to women mostly, uh, experience burnout. And until I put those signs in front of you that this is what's going on, a lot of women think it's just normal. So, and why female entrepreneurs? Well, you know, with the rise of the pandemic, a lot of women have had to come home and start their own businesses. And I'm finding that they're the population currently that's really experiencing a great amount of burnout because they're trying to grow businesses. They're trying to juggle the kids. They're trying to get dinner on the table. So they're burning the midnight oil. They're burning the candle essentially at both ends and it's catching up with them right about now. So I uh, really focus on helping female entrepreneurs up-level their health so they can up-level their business um, and make more money for their family. So, and at the end of the day, feel better. So I hope this video resonated with you. Maybe you can identify with some of the things that I had gone through. Maybe you're actually going through it yourself and you're thinking, wow, I thought it was depression. I thought it was just that I was lazy. I thought it was just because I was old. No, 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 no. Consider adrenal dysfunction and consider just some routine, basic things that you can actually do at home that don't cost a lot of money. So stay tuned for future videos on how exactly to make yourself feel better. If you want a quick resource before I do a video, if you're more of a reader, hop on over to my website, drreneewellenstein.com. I have an entire quiz to see if you are experiencing burnout and you can grab your very own uh, ebook that I wrote on adrenal fatigue. And if you want more information, I do have a free Facebook group on uh, Facebook. It's a private uh, holistic health community. I would love to have you in there. It's called Happy Healthy Holistic with Dr. Renee. I will uh, link it below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Remember, if you like this content, subscribe so you do not miss future videos and like it and send it to someone you love because sharing is caring, knowledge is power, and you may be giving somebody hope today by just sharing this video. So, all right, we'll see you soon in the next video.